All right, so let's look at inverse trig functions. Uh, this is going to be several videos. These are the these are the examples that I'm going to work. Uh, you can see there's part one, part two, part three, and part four. There'll be I'll have four videos, uh, and each part will have its own video. I just decided to do it like that so the so I wouldn't have just one big long video. Now for this for inverse trig functions we've got to look at this arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent and so on. Okay. And the arc arc sine is you, you've got to understand that the range uh, is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 or if you're in degrees negative 90 to 90 degrees and for cosine it's 0 to pi or 0 to 180 if you're in degrees for tangent negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 or negative 90 to 90 degrees if you're in degrees and then for cotangent it's 0 to pi or 0 to 180 and for uh, arc secant that's 0 to pi over 2 or pi over 2 to pi or 0 to 90 or 90 to 180 okay and for arc cosecant that'd be negative pi over 2 to 0 or 0 to pi over 2 or negative 90 to 0 or 0 to 90 okay so so basically the the secant it's it's like the cosine see 0 to pi but the reason that it's split up like this is because uh, it's because we can't be at pi over 2 okay because the the cosines remember, remember secant is 1 over cosine and cosine of pi over 2 is 0 so that would have a uh, that would give us a zero in the denominator. That's why we're leaving out the pi over two. And the same thing here. This is why we're leaving out the zero for the arc, arcs cosecant. Okay. So you've just, you've got to know these right here. All right. And then you need to know this, all the special angles. Okay. So you can look at those and and you just need to memorize them. Okay. Try to try to learn them without you know d don't try to memorize the unit circle just know these and then and you'll do so much better you know with the with trig if you can just memorize these basic ones 30 45 and 60 degrees of sine cosine and tangent okay so let's go ahead and get started all right so we've got part three here for uh, inverse trig functions uh, you can see here's the other two parts. These are, I've already I've done these videos. And that's just the work from from those. So check those out. I would recommend watching them all in order because it covers everything. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's let's look at this 13 here. We want to find sine of inverse tangent three halves. All right. So so the way that we're gonna work this one is we will draw draw this out okay and we're gonna let theta equal inverse tangent of three halves so what that means if you if you remember your definition or remember that table at the first this means tangent theta is equal to three halves. Okay. Now, if we draw this out, here's theta, and remember tangent, it, and and here's our right angle. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, and so we need to find this we'll just call this uh, we'll call that C I guess so we know C squared is equal to 2 squared plus 
3 squared. That's just Pythagorean theorem. And so we get c squared. That's going to be 4 plus 9, which is 13. So that tells us c is equal to square root of 13. All right. So this is square root of 13. All right. So, so look what we're trying to find. We're trying to find sine of inverse tangent 3 halves. So this is equal to sine of theta. Well, how do we know that? Well, if you, if you look at this, you see the inverse tangent of 3 halves. The inverse tangent of 3 halves, we let that equal theta. So I just replace this with theta. All right, so now let's look at this. Sine theta is equal to what? Well, here's theta. Remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's, that's going to be 3. Let me write that better. That's going to be 3 over square root of 13. And then we rationalize the denominator, multiply numerator and denominator by square root of 13. And so that gives us 3 square roots of 13 over 13. And this would be your answer. All right. All right, so let's look at 14. And we're going to do it, we're going to do it the same way. Well, look what we're looking for. Tangent of inverse cosine of negative 5 over 13. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let theta equal inverse cosine of negative 5 over 13. So that means cosine theta is negative 5 over 13. All right. So now let's draw this. All right. Well, this is cosine here is inverse cosine of a negative number. Well, remember, if you watch the first two parts, cosine is from 0 to pi over 2, or 0 to 180. So remember, cosine is positive in the first quadrant, negative in the second quadrant. So that means this will be in the second quadrant, and there's theta. So if we drop this down, there's our right angle. Okay. And remember, cosine, if you remember, cosine is x over r. Remember, this is x, this is y, and this is r. Okay. Remember, sine is y over r, cosine is x over r, tangent is y over x. All right. Well, we know r is always positive, so we know that's 13. And then x, well, we had to come this way, so we know the negative is here, negative 5. Well, now I need to find this. Well, we'll just call this y. So we know that um, 13 squared is equal to negative 5 squared. See, 13 squared is x or c squared or r squared is equal to x squared, x squared plus y squared plus y squared. So that's going to be 169 equals 25 plus y squared. And so y squared is equal to 144. And we know y is equal to, and it's positive 12 because we're up here, positive 12. Okay, we're in the second quadrant. Y is positive there. So we know we get positive 12. All right, so let's label this 12. And let me erase this part of it. All right, so now 
Well, what are we looking for? We're looking for, let me change colors back. So we're looking for tangent of inverse cosine of negative 5 over 13. So that's the tangent of, now remember, inverse cosine, inverse cosine is theta. So that's tangent theta. Now remember, tangent is what? Y over X. So that's 12 over negative 5. Or you could write it negative 12 fifths. Okay. Either one. You can leave the negative down there. It doesn't matter. All right. So that's part three. We'll do part four next time. Uh, I'll do that in another video. So give me a like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.